Good morning, children. So, in the today's class, we are going to learn about the concept of parallel lines, which we have got in class eight and seven also. So, now first to begin this exercise six point two, you will have to get the idea of parallel lines. Now, let us see the conditions. Conditions required for two lines to be paired. So, what are the conditions required for the two lines to be paired? Say you take the lines A and N intersected by the transversal line N. So now, so the conditions. One, if a pair of alternate angles are equal, so alternate angles means either interior or exterior. Let us take the pair of alternate interior angles. So now, these three, so three, four, five, and six. These four are the alternate interior angles. So here, angle three equals to angle six. This is the pair of alternate interior angles. Angle four equals to angle five. This is another pair of alternate interior angles. So if any of these conditions you get equal, either angle three equals to angle six or angle four equals to angle five. They form a pair of alternate interior angles. In that case, also the two lines will be parallel. So that is line N will be, will be parallel to line N. Similarly, alternate exterior angles. Exterior that is the angles lying outside the lines. So here one, two, eight, and seven. These four angles are the alternate exterior angles. So here. Angle one equals to angle eight. Angle two equals to angle seven. So these two pairs, if they are equal, in their case also the two lines will be paired. Let us take a pair of corresponding angles equal. Now, corresponding angles they should lie on the same side of this line here. That is, angle five equals to angle one. So one and five. Equal. They form a pair of corresponding angles, or angle three equals to angle seven. They form another pair of corresponding angles. Next, you take means on the other side of this line L. Angle two equals to angle six. Angle four equals to angle eight. So there are four pairs of corresponding angles. If these any pair of angles are equal, then the two lines will be called parallel lines. Now, the last one. The sum of the adjacent interior angle is supplementary, that means 180 degree. So they are called, so this 4 and 6, they are the adjacent interior angles formed on the same side of the line L. So this is line L. On the same side, these are the two adjacent interior angles. So 4 and 6, if their the sum is 180 degree, then the two lines will be parallel. Or angle 3 plus angle 5, if you get a total sum, 180 degree. Then the two lines will be paired. So that so a two lines will be paired if any of these condition fulfills. Either a pair of alternate interior angles or a pair of alternate exterior angles equal or a pair of corresponding angles equal for the sum of the adjacent interior angle is supplementary. In that case, the two lines will be paired. So this you have gone in class eight and seven also. Now, today, we are going to begin 6.2. Before that, we will be doing one theorem. So it is given that theorem, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, Prove that each pair of alternate interior angles are equal. Now, a transversal intersects two parallel lines. Let us take the two parallel lines. Say, say this P, this is line Q, intersected by the transversal, say line L. This is a line L. So the line L intersects the two parallel lines, say P and Q. At the point say A and B. Now you have to prove that each pair of alternate interior angles must be equal. 
So let us take here some angles. So one, say two, it is three, it is angle four. four. Now you have to prove that if this line L, transversal line L, intersect the two parallel lines, so the parallel lines are P and Q, intersected by the transversal line L at the two distinct points, say A and B, prove that each pair of alternate interior angles must be equal. That means you will have to prove that angle 2 equals to angle 4, angle 1 equals to angle 3. So you will prove each pair. So 1 equals to 3, angle 2 equals to angle 4. So now, let line L, so this is the line L, intersect, intersect two parallel lines, two parallel lines, P and Q, P and Q at points A and B, so at A and B. So this one is given. Now to prove that if this line L intersect the two parallel lines P and Q at the two distinct points A and B, you have to prove that there each pair of the alternate interior angles must be equal. That means angle 2 equals to angle 4, angle 1 equals to angle 3. So to prove. Now to prove angle 1 equals to angle 3. Angle 2 equals to angle 4. Now we are going to start with the fact. So this proof. Now there are so many ways of doing. It. So they have given that the two lines are parallel. So if the two lines are parallel, in that case, you have got the conditions that if the two lines are parallel, that means either a pair of alternate angles must be equal or a pair of corresponding angles must be equal or the sum of the adjacent interior angles on the same side of this line L should be supplementary. So now you have to prove that the alternate interior angles must be equal. So that means you will leave this condition because you are going to prove. So you have been left with the two other options that means a pair of corresponding angles or the sum of the adjacent interior angles on the same side is supplementary. So that means then you have got the vertically opposite angles, you can use them. But using these using these axioms, that is the corresponding angles, using the adjacent interior angles, you can prove that each pair of the alternate interior angles must be equal. So now let us take this way. So this is the straight line, and here the line, so here the ray A A L lies on this line. So these two are the adjacent angles, so they will form linear here, 180 degree. So here, angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degree. So it is linear here, linear here. Then, next, as the two lines are parallel lines, so the sum of the adjacent interior angle is supplementary. So 2 plus 3, so again, Again, angle 2 plus angle 3 equals to 180 degree. You can write four interior angles or the adjacent interior angles or adjacent interior angles. Adjacent interior angles. So now, let us take this as 1. This will be 2. And say, again you take 1 plus 4. So the two lines are parallel. That is why you can take 1 plus 4, 180, adjacent interior angles. So now, angle 1, so here, here 1 plus 4. So now, here, again 1 plus 4 equals to 180 degree. This is also adjacent interior angles. Adjacent interior angles. This is the equation number 3. Now this comparing 1 and 2. So you compare 1 with 
equation number two, then two with three. So from one, so from equation one and equation number two. So you get the total sum is 180 degree on both sides. So these two sides are equal. So here angle one plus angle two equals to angle two plus angle three. So here one plus two equals to two plus three. Why? Because the total sum is 180 degrees. So now angle two got cancelled. So you got here angle one is equal to angle three. So here one equals to three. That is, you have got the first one. So that the pair of alternate interior angle is equal. But they have got each pair. So the next one. Then from one and three, you will get from one and three. From equation one and three, we get so here equation one. So you go here the total sum is 180 degree. Equation three, this is three, the total sum is 180. So these two sides are equal. So here angle one plus angle two equals to angle one plus angle four. So one plus four equals to one plus two. 1 plus 2. So this 1 got cancelled. So you got here angle 2 equals to angle 4. So here 2 equals to 4. So first one you got angle 1 equals to angle 3. One pair of alternate interior angles. Angle 2 equals to angle 4. So 2 and 4 equal. So this is the second pair of alternate interior angles. So, so it is you will make one to make the two lines parallel so here they have given one pair of alternate interior angle equal so you took as one and two they are now equal now to make the two lines parallel 
So to make the two lines parallel, you are going to use the other two axioms. That is, either you make a pair of corresponding angles equal or you make the sum of the adjacent interior angle supplementary. So you will make any of these two conditions. If, if either of these two conditions exist, in that case the two lines will be parallel lines. Now, there are so many ways of doing, you can do it the most easiest way. Let us take this as angle 3. Angle 3. There are so many ways of doing. So now, here, 1 equals to 2, then so it is given. Angle 1 equals to angle 2. So it is given. Because such that a pair of alternate interior angle is equal. So it is given. The pair of alternate interior angle is equal. So this is one pair. So it is given. Next, the line M and the line B. So this is line M. This is line B. Meet at this point. Say this point A. This is point B. Now these two angles are equal. Why? Because they form a pair of vertically opposite angles. So they are the vertical. They are always equal. So these two are equal. So angle 1 equals to angle 3. It is vertically opposite angles. Now you compare these two equations. This is 1. This is equation number 2. So you compare these two. 1 equals to 3 vertically opposite angles. Angle 1 equals to angle 2. This one is given. A pair of alternate interior angle is equal. So it is given. Now comparing these two equations, you will get since these two are the same, so in place of 1, you can write 2 because angle 1 equals to 2. So angle 2 equals to angle 3. So now comparing this 1 and 2, you got angle 2 equals to angle 3. So angle 2 and 3, they form a pair of corresponding angles. This 2 and 3, they form a pair of corresponding angles. That is why the, the two lines are parallel. Why? Because to be parallel, you, you will have to fulfill either of the three conditions, any one. Either a pair of alternate angles equal, but here they have given the alternate interior angles are equal. So it is given. So from taking these two, you have met a pair of corresponding angles equal. That, that is why now the two lines are paired. Let line B intersect lines lines M and N at A and B at A and B respectively such that such that so, so it is given that such that a pair of alternate interior angle is equal. So this is a pair of alternate interior angles such that angle 1 equals to angle 2. This one is given. Now to prove, now to prove, prove that the two lines are parallel. You are to prove line M is parallel to line N. So M is parallel to N. Now to prove. So it is given that the pair of alternate interior angle is equal. So angle 1 equals to angle 2. This one is given. So, so it is given. So it is given here. Then these two lines, line P and line N, meet at this point A. So they are at vertically opposite angles. Vertically. So angle 1 equals to angle 3. It is vertically opposite angles. So this is equation number 1, this is equation 2. So from comparing 1 and 2, so from 1 and 2 we get, so you get. So here since the uh, left hand side is equal, so the right hand side also will be equal. So here angle 2 equals to angle 3. So angle 2 equals to angle 3 but they form a pair of corresponding angles that is why the line n is parallel to line n so they form a pair of they form a pair of a pair of 
corresponding angles corresponding angles so therefore f is parallel to f so this you can do it in various ways Let us take your case book, exercise 6.2. I will be going from question number 2. So, given, given AB is parallel to CB, parallel to EF, and Y is to Z, Y is to Z, equals to 3 is to 7 3 is to 7 now to find value of x that is measure of x measure of angle x so the figure is given So it is given that the line AB is parallel to line CD is parallel to the line EF. That means all the three lines are parallel to each other. So the lines are parallel to one another. So AB is also parallel to EF. CD is parallel to EF because all the three lines are parallel to each other. So it is given that y is to z, angle y and z, ratio is given 3 is to 7. So here, determination. So here, angle y is to angle z equals to 3 is to 7. So now, you can take, as they have given in ratio, so you can take y is 3, 8, 7, 8, sorry, z is 7, 8. So let, angle y is equal to 3a because there is x so I have taken a then angle z is equal to 7a or say you can take as a you can take a also now all the three lines are parallel a b is parallel to c parallel to ef so here a b is parallel to c d is parallel to ef that means a b is also parallel to ef so the three lines are parallel to each other. So AB is parallel to EF. Now, here, they have given Y and Z. So this Y and Z is given. Now, here, here X and Y, they are now equal. So here AB, this is EF, this is A, this is B, this is EF. EF. In the second part, so here there is X and here there is Z. So now it is X, this is Z. So now here these two are the alternate interior angles because AB is parallel to EF. So X equals to Z alternate interior angles. So first comes angle X equals to angle Z. Since here AB is parallel to EF, AB is parallel to EF because the three lines are parallel to each other. So AB is parallel to EF, comma. Reason is alternate angles, alternate angles. So it's alternate interior angles, alternate interior, interior angles. Now that means here, now here. This AB is parallel to CD. AB is parallel to CD. So the line AB is parallel to line CD. 
then so these are the two adjacent interior angles so their sum will be 180 degrees so here angle x plus angle y is equal to 180 degree sum of adjacent interior angles adjacent interior angles is 180 degree adjacent so now here x equals to z and z is given so in place of x you can write z because the measure of z is given they have not given the measure of x so here x equals to z so here z will be 7x y is given so it will be angle y is equal to 180 degree so, so in place of z it is 7x 7k so z it will be 7k plus y y is 3k so it will be 3k equals to 180 degree so now 7k plus 3k will be 10k equals to 180 degree what will be now k so k equals to 180 divided by 10 so you will get here 18 degree now the question is what is x so here x equals to z how much is z 7k so therefore here angle x equals to 7k so angle x how much is angle x angle x equals to angle z how much is z 7k so angle x equals to 7k so 7k since angle x equals to angle z so here 7 into k k is 80 degrees so it's 80 so you will get 126 degrees. This is your answer. So first of all, you do that since all the three lines are parallel to each other, AD is parallel, CD is parallel to EF. Therefore, AD is also parallel to EF. Now, if AD is parallel to EF, then these two angles are equal. They are the alternate interior angles. Alternate interior. So here they have given the Ratio is y and z, so y and z. So in place of x, you will put the value of z. So the z is 7. So in the end, this. Secondly, AD is parallel to CD. So these are the two adjacent interior angles, x plus y, 180. So by the way, you have got 126 degrees. Very simple one. So it is given that AB is parallel to CD, EF is perpendicular to C. So EF is EF is perpendicular to C. So this is 90 degree. So now here, so the two lines are parallel, and here you got 90 degree. You want to find AGE. So this angle you AGE. This angle you will find GEF. This angle you will find an FGE. FGE. So this angle you will. So now here they have given GEE. 
So G E D. G E D. So this one is given 126 degree. 126 degree. Now, first we can get this one also. So now these two lines are parallel lines. A B is parallel to C B. This one is A B. And this one is C D. And here this line is there. So it is G and E. So now these two angles will be equal. Because so it is given that AD is parallel to AB is parallel to C D, intersected by the line G E. So that is why these two form a pair of alternate interior angles. So A G E. So A G E equals to G E D. So this will be 126 degree. Why? Because they form a pair of alternate interior angles. Now, the gravitation. So, this equals to this angle because these two lines are parallel lines. So, that is why they form a pair of alternate interior angles. So, here angle AGE equals to angle GED equals to 126. So this will be 126. Reason you will say reason is must. So this is alternate interior angles. So it is alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. Next you need G here. So G now you got this angle. So this plus this 180 degree because linear pair. This, this two, the sum of these two adjacent angles, they form a straight line. That is A F B. So these two angles measure will be 180 because they form a linear pair. So angle A G E plus angle F G E equals to 180 degree. So it is linear pair. Linear pair. Excellent. So here A G E you got how much? 126 degrees. So A G E 126 plus angle F G E equals to 180. So this implies you got angle F G E equals to 180 minus 126 degree. You got here 4. So 7 minus 2 will be 5. Next you need, so you got this also, FZE, you got AG, now you need ZF, ZF, so GEF, how do that? So, from this total angle, minus 90 degree, 90, so from this whole angle, minus FED, so from this total angle, deduct this angle, you will get this angle, that is GEF. So again, angle G E F. So G E F. So this angle equals to G E D. So this total minus F E D. So from this whole deducting this angle, you will get this much. So G E F. So angle G E D minus minus angle. F E D. So F E D. So you will get 126 minus 126 minus 90 degree. So it is 90. You got 36 degree. Very simple. Equals to 
110 degree and angle RST equals to 130 degree. Now we find angle QRS. QRS. So the figure is given. Now here they have given that PQ is parallel to ST. So PQ, the line PQ, parallel to the line ST. So these two lines are parallel. PQR equals to 110. So PQR, so this angle is given 110 degree. And RST, so it is given 130 degree. 130. You want to find QRS. So you will find this angle. This angle. Now to get this angle, you will do some construction. So how to do? So you can draw a line through R parallel to ST or you can draw parallel to P. You can just draw the line straight from this end to that end through R parallel or simply you can draw in this way. So through R you draw a line parallel to say you can just extend it also this way or you can just extend it this way or this way. So both ways you can do. So here, let us take the line this way. So through R, you draw a line parallel to say S. So here, say it is A, it is a B. So, so this is the construction you have. Done. Sometimes you need to draw construction so to get the proof. Otherwise, you will not get the proof. So now, here, construction. True R. So, true R, comma, AB parallel to, AB parallel to ST, or PQ, is drawn. So, through R, you have drawn a line A, either that is parallel to ST or the line is drawn parallel to PQ. Because only they have given that PQ is parallel to ST. So these two lines are given as parallel. Now through R, you have drawn another line that is A, B, that is parallel to ST also or that is parallel to PQ also. Now, since ST is parallel to AB, you can take here one angle. Say that angle you take is 1. Suppose it is marked as angle 1. Now if ST is parallel to RB, because as the line AB is parallel to ST also, therefore ST is parallel to RB also. So that is why now these are the two adjacent interior angles. These two. So 1 plus 130 will get 180 degree. So as these two lines are parallel lines, Intersected by the line SR, therefore these are the two adjacent interior angles. So now here determination. So here 130 that is angle TSR. So TSR plus angle one. Angle one. So these two lines are the parallel lines. RB is parallel to ST. Intersected by the line SR. That is why these are the two adjacent interior angles. So these two. So this angle plus this angle, you have got 180 degrees. This four interior or adjacent interior angles. Anyone? Now, TSR. So it is given 130. So TSR. It is 130 degrees plus angle 1. So angle 1 equals to 180 degrees. So this implies angle 1 is equal to 180 minus 130. 
so equals to it is 50 degrees so you have got here how much 50 degrees so it is angle 1 50 degrees now you need this angle again PQ is parallel to AB which means PQ is also parallel to RB now this is PQ this one is RB intersected by the line QR so it is Q this is R this is D and this one is D now these two are equal so this line is parallel to this line so here RB is parallel to PQ so that is these two angles this angle and this angle so these two angles are equal because these two are the parallel lines intersected by the line QR that is why this form a pair of alternate interior angles so this angle that is QRB equals to 110 alternate interior angles so now this equals to this angle so here you got QRS and here angle 1 so this angle so this plus this equals to this angle, alternate interior angle. So here, again, again, angle QRB, angle QRB equals to, so this angle equals to 110 alternate interior angles because this line is parallel to this line intersected by this line so these two angles are equal so it is 110 degree it is alternate interior angles alternate interior angles alternate so your QRB so QRB so this angle equals to 110 alternate interior angles so QRB so QRB means QRS plus angle 1 so angle QRS plus plus angle 1 so QRS plus angle 1 equals to QRB so QRB so this two equals to 110 so this implies angle QRS so QRS plus angle 1 it is 50 degrees equals to 110 so you will get angle QRS equals to 110 minus 50 degree so minus 50 you will get 60 so thus QRS is 60 degree so through R you took a line AD parallel to either ST or parallel to PQ because these two lines are already given as parallel lines PQ is parallel to ST. Now S, ST is parallel to RB, so these are the two adjacent interior angles. So you got one as 50. Again, PQ is parallel to AB, which means PQ is parallel to RB. So that means this line intersects the line QR, intersect PQ and RB and Q and R. So that is why this angle and this angle they form a pair of alternate interior angles so you go QRS 60 
So this sum is very simple. You use the triangle property. Also, they have given that AB is parallel to C. So the line AB is parallel to CD. So then APQ. So here angle APQ. So it is given 50 degree. So this part is 50. Angle PRD. So P R D. So this one is given 127. You are to find X and Y. So this X and Y. Now it's very simple. S A B is parallel to C D. So S A B is parallel to C D. This is A B. This is C. This is D. A B is parallel. So here the line say this is here. So now, so the line PR intersects the two parallel lines at P and R respectively, A, B and C, D and P and R. So that is why this angle equals to this angle. So due to alternate interior angles, because there are the two parallel lines intersected by the line PR, that is why these two angles are equal, because they form a pair of alternate interior angles. So that means you can say this equals to this angle. That means A P R A P R. So this angle equals to P R D. So P R D. So this equals to this angle. Why? Because these two lines are the parallel lines intersected by the line P R. That is why this angle and these two angles are equal. So here. Here angle A P R. Angle A P R equals to P R D equals to angle angle P R D reason so it is alternate interior angles so it is alternate interior angles angles so A P R so A P R is given fifty plus y. A P R so it's given 50 plus angle Y 50 plus angle Y equals to so P R D so P R D it is 127 so here angle Y equals to 127 minus 50 so you will get 77 so you go up to 1 next these two lines are the parallel lines so here, so it is given like this. Here it is given 50 degree, and here it is given x. So here AB is parallel to CD. AB is parallel to CD, and the line that that intersect the two parallel lines AB and CD is this line. That is PQ. So PQ. So these two angles are equal. These two angles are equal because form a pair of alternate interior angles. So here x equals to 50 degree. So AD is parallel to CD and the line PQ meets at P and Q at the line AD and CD. So that is why these two angles are equal because they form a pair of alternate interior angles. Alternate. So here angle X equals to 50 degree. It is alternate interior angles. So it is very simple. So with this we have come to the end of this, this exercise. Thank you.